introduction. I think most of you have met me before. Um, but for you guys that came out here today, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Julio Vasconcelos. I work at a company called Experience Project, which is actually an anonymous online community where people go and can, can share stories about any passion or any life experience that they really care about. And then through those life stories and those experiences, they can find other people. So uh, just to corroborate a little bit of what Matt was talking about, our website is entirely anonymous in that none of your personal information is on there because you don't actually have real world connections. Like I'm not friends with Matt on Experience Project, but I have 20 other people that I have friended on my site because they've shared a number of different life experiences that are very similar. So it's a place that people oftentimes go to share things that they may not feel comfortable sharing in the, in the real world. For example, we have a lot of things, people talking about problems in their marriages, relationships, illness, disease, that kind of stuff that are things that really matter to you and you really want to connect to someone on, but you no don't necessarily want to broadcast it out to the world or even to your, your friend group. So what I'm going to talk about here are a few things that I picked out in terms of some winning strategies and topics in terms of how to really get ideas spread. This is by no means a sort of a comprehensive list of everything you can do to get an idea spread on Facebook specifically, but they're things that we've just seen work time and time again if you really want to reach a broad audience. So I picked five of these things and I have a, a couple of examples within each of them. I think that there's a good learning amount of learning that can be done in terms of the kinds of content and messages that work. I think there's a whole other separate discussion in terms of the actual mechanics of spreading these ideas. We talked a little bit about this uh, the last time I was here, but the whole notion of being able to A-B test things uh, your storytelling abilities in terms of your headline and the actual story. All those things actually matter a lot, but this is more about the actual content and the actual positioning, I think, and tone of what you may want to spread. So we have five different things. Uh, one of them is just going after vanity. People want to see other people talking about them. They want to look good in front of friends. People always say one of the biggest uses for online, online in general is just to try to make yourself look cool, uh, and I think Facebook is no different. Getting people angry, especially angry against a specific person, group, or topic. I don't mean hate necessarily here, but I do mean uh, you know, getting people together in a group uh, and bonding against a, a common goal. Cute, you know, everyone likes cute pictures of cats, babies, dogs, so seals, dolphins, you name it, always works. Uh, social proof, uh, talking about both uh, social pressure in terms of getting a group of people and then making an additional person want to join that group because sort of everyone is doing it that mentality, as well as a number of other things that, again, trying to look cool and trying to make yourself uh, look better in front of another group and trying to get some kind of approval always really works. And finally, uh, the notion of trying to save the world and showing that you care about a cause or you want to get involved. So um, let me just do a little bit of a deep dive in these because I think they'll start to make a lot more sense. So the first thing is vanity. Uh, whether you like it or not, everyone likes to look cool. They like to talk about themselves. Uh, how many of you know about this 25 random things meme that was going around? Pretty much everyone. Um, I think that this, is, this was uh, with the Facebook uh, notes feature, which was a fairly underutilized feature before this uh, little movement started going around. And I think it had something like a 300% increase within a week, just in terms of how viral <coughs> this was and how much people were using it. Uh, the basic notion was that a friend of yours would write 25 things about themselves that you know, were unique about yourself, and then they would go and tag 25 friends of theirs to then go participate. I think that the reason that this worked was that people love to share things about themselves and show, look at these 25 reasons why I'm so cool, right? So this is a friend of mine, Michelle. Sh you know, this thing shows up. This is her news feed. It shows up. She just participated in this experiment. And you can just see sort of the social capital in a way or uh, social proof that she's really accumulating here with people commenting and saying, look, Michelle, you're so cool. I'm so ha happy you share this thing. This is why I love you, um, et cetera. And this is what's going to get Michelle to do it. This is what's going to get someone else that looks at her thing to want to participate and also want to be part of this and actually you know, talk a little bit about themselves and have other people talking about themselves. Uh, there was a GSB student, Ed Baker. I don't know how many of you guys know him. Uh, he graduated in class of 08. He started a Facebook application called Send Hotness. The, the basic premise of this application was that you would see a number of pictures of your friends and you would rate them on a scale of 0 to 10 in terms of how hot they were. Um, and other people had rated you in terms of how hot you were. Um, and you would on actually only see your rating, your hotness rating in terms of how hot you were compared to everyone else once you had completed uh, you know, rating 10 other friends. Um, 
just goes to show how much people really want to see what people are talking about them. Like, I really want to know how hot I am. Uh, and I really want to see how people rated me. So it gives you a sense of how his application just grew extremely fast, right? Like, in five weeks, they reached five million people. Like, that's absurd, right? Like, five million people, that's bigger than a lot of countries, bigger than most cities in the world. It's ridiculous. And this is all about people wanting to know how hot they are and how other people perceive them. All about ego, all about vanity, right? Um, second thing, getting people really angry. I'm going to move this picture because I know it disturbs some of you, <laughs> Matt specifically. Um, getting people angry, right? Rallying people around a cause, but generally against a cause. So one of the things that I've done in the past that actually worked, that was really successful, here's a picture, poor, poor dog, right? So let me tell you the, the story behind this dog. Uh, there was an art exhibit in Honduras about two years ago where an artist took a stray dog and tied up the dog without food, without water, in an art gallery, uh, and just let the dog die. So this is the actual pictures of the art exhibit. Uh, you know, I think you all have the same emotional reaction to this that I think 99% of the world would, which is like, this is ridiculous, right? Like, how can someone be allowed to do this? But not only that, but the, there was a Central America uh, art exhibit that was going to be happening six months after this, and they actually invited him to do the art exhibit again, right, w I guess with another dog. Uh, so. We actually have a huge community on our site around pet lovers and people that care about animal rights. So this was a great way to take something that was already going on out there, a cause that a lot of people were protesting, namely the fact that this guy was going to be allowed to do this for a second time, um, and really get them together around sort of a petition and a movement to try to stop this kind of thing. And in doing so, us as Experience Project could actually introduce him to our community and to other people that cared about animal rights and cared about pets. So you can just get a quick sample here of some of the comments that people made. Uh, sorry, a lot of these I haven't seen, but there's a lot worse stuff that came out. But people are saying, like, this guy should be tied up, like, et cetera, et cetera. You can, you can kind of get the picture here. But you can get a sense of the, like, anger that really brought people together um, and really got them to want to act, right, to want to sign this petition and to also want to spread this out to as many people as they could. So th it's also worth mentioning that we never figured out, and we looked for a long time, that this was actually true. It's just like people were talking about this, but it, it doesn't almost even, but people get enraged about this stuff, nobody really fact checks. Exactly. It was, I actually think it was true. <laughs> There's obviously some debate around this. I actually think it was true, and I think even that if I mean, I'm not going to get into it, but uh, I think that the whole idea and what I think it was portrayed was a, a sort of a bad thing in general, whether or not the dog died or, not, or didn't die. Uh, but anyway, you can just see people get really incensed about this. They get together. They tell a lot of people, right? So it really helps to spread things uh, once you have sort of a common enemy or a common cause in a way. Uh, you know, I think that historically people have obviously used this uh, in terms of, you know, hate and a lot of negative uh, things. But you can also, you know, try to do good with it, right? Like try to help the animals and try to help animal rights with it. Uh, even though the emotions that you're channeling are those of anger, which I think are some of the most powerful ones out there. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I, don't, I, don't th I think I could just skip through this section now after, <laughs> after that reaction. But, um, you know, cute, right? Everyone loves cute things. Uh, you know, not to be sexist, especially women, whenever I do one of these pushes around like some cute animal or some cute thing, 90% of people that spread it are women. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, guys are still, it's a cute animal, you know, like you still, you know, you enjoy that, it's kind of funny, et cetera. <laughs> he disagrees. <laughs> uh, so here is a, an application on Facebook uh, called Fluff Friends. I don't know how many of you know it. Uh, but one of the reasons why, I've talked to the guys that did this application, and one of the reasons that they credit why this application has been so successful is just because the creatures are so cute. Like this little penguin and this little guy, that's actually my fluff friend at the top there. <laughs> Seems like he's in the Louvre uh, lately. But, um, you know, this is one of the things where uh, people really, you know, love cute things and they want to send them back and forth and they want to take care of these pets. And it becomes incredibly successful. Um, here's an example of something that I've done. I used to have an application where uh, we raised money for uh, saving dogs from, from shelters. Uh, in the beginning, you could send back and forth pictures of dogs. Like you could send those actual dogs there that were pictures of, I don't know where the, these pictures actually came from. Uh, but they were pictures of dogs that you could send back and forth. We then eventually changed it over to these more cartoon, like stylized dogs that were supposed to be like a lot cuter based on what we had seen and what we had heard. Um, and just so you have a sense of uh, the difference in the application, this is sort of a general engagement rate 
um, in the application. You can just see, so as soon as we launched it, which was right around that plateau, it just kept going and it just kept going up and up and up and up and up as people wanted to send this more and more and were more and more engaged with sort of these cute creatures. Um, social proof. So everyone wants to be part of a group. You know, when all of your friends are doing something, if you're not part of it, you may feel left out. And I think that that's a really strong emotion that you can tap into to really get ideas spread. Because it really goes to show that if you can get, you know, three out of four people to participate in a certain movement or idea spreading uh, scheme, you can really get that fourth person pretty easily because people really want to be part of it. Not only that, but people also want to look really cool in front of their friends. So whenever you do have a system where uh, social proof is important, people definitely want to be seen there. This is one of the biggest Facebook groups out there. Uh, you probably all have received an invitation to this group at some point. It's about like six degrees of separation, which is a theory that everyone in the world is separated by six different people. Uh, and someone started this group, and it was something like, hey, let's all join the group and invite all of our friends to join this group, because then we're going to prove this theory of six degrees of separation. And it's totally idiotic concept because there's no way to actually test this in any way. But um, everyone's joining it, right? Like everyone in your newsfeed is showing like, Matt joined the six degree separation, Sarah, M Mary, et cetera. And you're like, I might as well join the group, right? So this is a very simple thing that if you can get enough people and you can make it much more of a sort of a social thing uh, that you want to be part of it because everyone else is doing it, uh, it's usually very successful. And Matt talked to you a little bit about some of the mechanisms that are inherent in Facebook, like newsfeed, that just really help broadcast that and actually accelerate a little bit of that, that emotion and that feeling. The other thing I talked about is you want to look good, right? So Mafia Wars, everyone seems to love Mafia Wars. Um, uh, so some people like, some people don't like Mafia Wars. Uh, so Mafia Wars uh, has employed a number of different concepts that actually take on some of this, these ideas around social proof. One of them is just the, the notion of points. Like whenever you give people points for doing anything, people want to accumulate points. I don't know why, they just want to accumulate it. If you have a leaderboard of sorts where like actually there's some competitiveness in terms of like I have more points than you do, that's even more of a reason for someone to want to accumulate points. So you got like all these levels, right? Level one, level five, level 62. That guy's just playing mafia all day. Uh, but you know, that's an idea, right? Try to think about is there something I can include in my message or in my idea that can have some kind of point or reward system. You know, in all likelihood, that's going to help uh, adoption increase. It's going to help people participate in the way that you want them to participate. Um, now, this other, the last one that I want to talk about is this notion of saving the world and causes, right? Um, and I think that um, a little bit of a caveat is, you know, giving people the notion that they, or at least letting them think that they can save the world by doing something on a social network. Uh, just really gets people involved. And we've seen uh, time and time again this working on Facebook as well as all other social media. How many people know what application this is? Anyone? Causes, right? Causes is the number one application on Facebook with 25 million people uh, using it on a monthly basis. Again, that's a ginormous number of people that have wanted to participate in this application in large part because you know, your cost to participate is really low, right? You're telling, uh, you're telling someone that by joining a cause, which is clicking a button and you join this virtual cause, you're actually in some way helping out, um, you know, the, the real world people that are benefiting from this cause. You know, there's obviously some truth to that, but I think that the notion of having a very low uh, cost of entry into the application really helps people participate. And then because everyone's participating, you go back to that social proof idea, right? Like all of my friends are sending me these cause invitations. I want to make sure that I'm being sensitive here whenever I receive one of these invitations. I don't want to deny, you know, Matt's, you know, Facebook cause because I'm going to look bad in front of him. It's also going to look like I don't care. The other thing that's happening here is that it make people look good, right? Like people have always historically wanted to help out causes, you know, by going to benefits, being seen at parties, making donations so that their names are on plaques on different business schools. Uh, it's a little bit of this notion of showing like, hey, look, I really contributed something to this cause. And because of that, I'm a better person, right? And I'm going to build some kind of social capital through that. I think that's inherent in the Causes app. Um, I think that you see the number of people that have installed. This is sort of a box that goes on someone's profile. The number of people that have put that box on their profile to show what they care about and that they're actually making a difference is enormous. The number of invitations uh, that people are sending to each other and really encouraging to participate in the cause is huge because it makes you look good, it makes me look good, and we both uh, help save the world in some way. Um, 
couple of other just examples of causes, again, on Facebook. Uh, Green Book, which is actually an application Matt developed uh, way in the beginning of Facebook uh, platform, was an ability for people to be able to offset their uh, CO2 emissions. It, you know, became the biggest, uh, let's say, environment app probably on any social network at that time, just because you know, people really wanted to show that they were helping to save the world, especially uh, with the green movement getting so hot about, this is almost two years ago. Uh, little Green Patch, which many of you have seen, it's sort of the same notion of Green Book, right? Like a cause-based application, but then you're kind of marrying in that cute idea that I talked about before, right? Like, I'm now going to help save the world by sending around these cute little creatures. Like, so that's like a double whammy, right? It's awesome. That's why that's one of our top 10, top 10 apps on Facebook today. Uh, and then here's a variety of different invitations that have worked really well. One to save the Andean mountain cat and one for the pet care center. Uh, again, cute and cause-based. So that was it in terms of sort of five ways, I think, that you can really try to think about your ideas and how to make them a little bit more viral. Uh, try to think about any one of those five things and can I apply one of those to the way that I'm trying to spread an idea because I think that historically we've seen it works and I think it'll continue to work. Uh, but by no, by no means are, is this an exhaustive list. So you should definitely think of new ones and try to see if you see any real world examples of what your strategy is working somewhere else.